one. All right. Well, this is one that I think a lot of people are excited for. Equinox, one of these teams that, you know, they looked really strong in their first game, looked very shaky in their second game. Kind of the opposite for Team K. So they fell to Clash in game number one, then rebounded, bounced back strong in their second game of the week. So uh, it's really going to be this that consistency issue that we kind of get to determine is Case or Equinox one of these two teams? Will they find that consistency? Absolutely. So comparing the regions, North America versus Europe, one of the biggest things we talked about last weekend was the drafting. We didn't really understand why teams were going for the slider pick, but Draft is completely centered around play style. I absolutely love the European draft. Really meta going on right now. I think Lyra is great, obviously. Celeste and Cruel still very strong and still can be an absolutely deadly force, but I have seen a lot of North American teams switching over towards this Lyra as the first pick. She's very strong. Equinox answering with the Celeste and the Alpha. Little bit interesting. I, I haven't really seen Alpha do too well in this meta, but we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes here. Yeah, I think Case is going to be very happy to get that Reza on their side, though. Reza is one of these picks that Europe was playing a ton of. It was one of the most picked heroes for all of Europe, whereas North America only picked it once or twice. So another one of those regional disparities, but this Reza pick has looked very strong regardless of who has been playing it. So I think Case was definitely going to be happy that they got that one on through. A Lorelei, though, is going to be coming out, Flash. It's the first Lorelei I believe that we have seen in 5v5. I don't think we saw one last week. I, I think we had it once, and I think it was played as a CP mid laner, if I'm not mistaken. It was in Europe. It was in okay. Europe. But, but it was I just should know. I, yeah. I was only casting all the games, but I, I don't hey, that's necessarily right. I remember the Lorelei. Maybe it's just because there were so many games yeah. that kind of meshed together. But Grumpjaw going to be the answer for a Lorelei. But Lorelei, I think, is such a strong pick into, we've seen so much crowd control coming out and having that wa uh, the water wall is just very, very strong to be able to cleanse that crowd control off of targets. Definitely, and with Team Queso picking up this scarf now, once they knock Alpha into her reboot, Alpha is so vulnerable, she can't get off, to, off of a goop. So if Lorelai's there to drop that waterfall, keep Alpha alive to make sure she's getting through that reboot process, that'll be super good. On top of that, is gonna work really well because if Reza is jumping onto Celeste in that backline with the aggression that we saw out of Europe last week, so effective in making sure she stays alive, able to get off her damage. Equinox picking up the Vox, gonna be another great pick for them. Yeah, I'm liking their composition thus far. There's a lot of AOE and also a good amount of range, depending on how they decide to build the uh, Alpha. If Alpha goes Crystal Power, then you go Weapon with the Vox, Crystal obviously with the Celeste, and you pick yourself another Weapon Carry. There's so much AOE burst damage between Celeste, Alpha, you get the Vox ramping up on the back lines. That's a devastating team fight composition. You see the ban coming out of Taka. I'm actually really surprised Taka made it that far <laughs> into the draft to begin with, but that's exactly why they knew that they wanted to go for another more of a squishy backline style pick. I'm assuming that's going to be a CP Sky, but with all the crystal power Queso already has on now, the board. I was going to say, because of all that, the crystal power with the res and the scarf, I don't think it's going to be crystal. I think they're going to go weapon power, use the sky as a lot of utility as well to slow down these targets that are going to be chasing or trying to kite away. Because there's very good kiting potential with the range from Equinox. If you slow them down, use the Reza, use the Grumtra to dive onto targets, you can start picking people off. Okay, guys, so picks are in. And now who are the players to watch on each side? Flash, why don't we start with you? Has to be Tiet Tetno JJ for the side of Queso. Had a little bit of a quiet start, I think, in week one. He was definitely shaky in that first game up against Clash. Not really finding his footing. That's completely normal as far as early game nerves go. Just getting some farming in there, not wanting to overextend. His Varya mechanics were okay. Unfortunately, Clash definitely looking a bit cleaner, doing his best to try and defend, but they're just too far behind at this point. Clash absolutely routing right through them. But he needs to step it up. Uh, he needs to be on picks that he's a little bit more comfortable with, even though Varya is one of his most played heroes. He might be on the scarf today. I, I would assume it would be him. And uh, if he has a strong game, I think Case is going to look really good. Yeah, definitely one of those players that has stepped up in the past. On the other side of the rise, I'm going to be taking a look at Viking once again. We, he was a, one of our players to watch last week as well because of his performance in day one on Celeste. But you then go to his day two performance on the Varia, and it was nowhere near as strong a play from him. He had 
excellent positioning, avoiding death, staying outside of team fights, using his range in game number one. Game number two, he was constantly in the middle of these team fights. We saw him go down multiple times without even being able to use his ultimate. And if his positioning is on point, he has a massive impact in the fights. If he's not on point with his positioning, he gets taken down early, and that's a large part, part of Equinox damage. Ooh, okay. Looks like uh, we've got a little bit of trash <laughs> talk here on the Twitters. Uh, let's see, Tyrus VG says, week two of the VPL preseason invitational in roughly one hour, we will face VG Equinox, hoping to cheddar their dreams of beating us on the rise. Queso proud, I, I am a fan of puns. I appreciate <laughs> cheese. So all of this is very good for me, guys. Yeah, Tyra is one of those players that's never lacking in confidence. Yeah. He's a very confident player and rightfully so. You know, we talked about him so much last year as a breakout star in Vainglory. He has earned his reputation. But now if you start throwing stuff up on Twitter <laughs> like that, you have to back it up. Right. I, I appreciate that it's like pretty clean, but it involves puns. So this, is, this is the best of everything. So, okay, the match is just about to begin, but while we wait for both of the teams to start, why don't you give us the blueprint of how uh, Equinox Esports could pull the upset over team. Oh, never mind. Shut up. Shut up, you guys. We're ready for the game. It's happening. Uh, the game has just started, so let's take you there now and let's see how it all plays out. The Sovereign's Rise. And my favorite thing about all of the matches so far here in Europe is it has been action from minute one. And this is no different. Queso going aggressively into the mid lane, now moving through the bottom side jungle. This is something we've seen a lot of the teams here in Europe start to do, is prioritize taking away the farm from the enemy jungle, deny a lot of that experience, and it's surprising how quickly you get the snowball going. If you get one or two level leads on your opponents, suddenly the games can start closing out really quick. For sure, Team Queso, if you guys missed it, did invade onto Equinox's side of the jungle, selling away that crystal buff. Now you can see Equinox trying to get something back. Stefan 2 and Kieran up in that top lane, looking for that healing camp. They will get it. And Team Queso, clearly one of the favorites in Europe. Uh, basically a dream team of superstars. Hundor and Tenno JJ on the same team. It's beautiful. Equinox, potentially names you haven't seen before. These guys are all Challenger Series stars here in Europe who have come together uh, and, and found themselves on the same team and currently looking to try and make the mark. Yeah, at this point, we're going to have to see whether they can rally back. They, uh, of course, are one and one at the moment. We saw a, a little bit of a, a tough performance last week out of them, but picking up the win, I'm pretty sure we saw their Celeste performance looking pretty good last week, and we've got Celeste again in this game as well. I'm really intrigued by this Lorelei. Uh, we haven't seen it yet in New York, but this is going to be uh, an interesting pick here as they go aggressive in the mid lane. Yeah, Tedo JJ looking for the fight, but Viking, great core collapse, will lock up Queso, allow for Alex SS and Viking to survive there. Viking will be channeling his backport back to the base. What's Tyrus and Hundor up to? Looks like they're once again on the aggressive, trying to invade onto Stefantu's jungle here. Team Queso constantly looking to find gold for themselves, and there it is. Stefantu slightly caught out. I say slightly, he's going down quickly. First blood to Team Queso. And you can see even just how much damage early on this Grump Jaw has. It's why it has been such a high priority pick. It's great even pre-6 before you get his real impact of that isolation. Comes into the fight, gets the first kill for Queso. And this is the type of fast pace that we've seen out of teams like Clash. Teams like Queso who in the early game are really heavily taking it to their opponents. Yeah, for sure. Trying to get that snowball started like you said. This top lane has been a battle. Kieran versus Palmatoro. Kieran, on one of his best heroes of all time, Vox, up in that top lane. Uh, and Palmatoro playing this Reza, trying to be that assassin type. You can see Hegman as well with the Lyra roaming around the map, making sure that he's providing the heals where necessary and also helping Palmatoro with that healing camp. Gives a massive advantage over to Palmatoro as far as health is concerned. Brings him right back into that lane. Gonna have to be careful and see what happens when Kieran Stefanto visits. Oh, Hegman in a little bit of trouble, but we'll be able to get out of there. I, I'm glad you bring up the Reza and, and how Reza has been used in Europe. It's actually 4-1 and one as a pick over the first week of games and was seen in every single game. Like, this is one of the picks that I think we have to watch out for. Every single game now is going to be high priority, has that massive amount of damage. And you can see Palmatoro going aggressive, even despite having the, the level disadvantage, able to just trade damage back quite effectively. 
once he gets that aftershock into his system scary times ahead for kieran although kieran has been dominating this early game Hamatoro will dive forward and look at that burst potential from the reza very difficult to deal with as a squishy when paulina is oh. continuing to harass almost takes kieran <laughs> down as well that's gonna be a back port coming out Palmatori now can push this lane in gonna be especially effective considering it's a captain wave as well and that's gonna punish kieran yeah, that's such an important factor here that we're seeing out of Queso that we didn't see a lot last week is the early push. Look at it, all three lanes have been pushing. That's actually a kill onto Alpha uh, happening across the map there as uh, that's the kill in the bottom lane. The pushes is happening for Queso all over the map. Difficult to defend all three lanes at the same time here. Yeah, so uh, looking like Luga has actually disconnected potentially from this game, uh, which is slightly unfortunate, although the pre-seasonal invitational is all about experimentation and testing as Viking finds uh, Tenno JJ testing that Spitfire onto him. Equinox have been at a massive disadvantage of 4v5 uh, from quite some time here. And that means that bot lane turret uh, easily punished for Team K. So they will find that first turret for themselves. Uh, so a little bit unfortunate for Equinox. They uh, have had a bit of a rough start, really, to the uh, the VPL here. Currently zero and two, um, and with Team Queso just pushing in a massive five thousand gold lead, it might be three zero soon. Yeah, at this point, I'm glad you brought bring up the fact that Adagio hasn't actually loaded into the game. Uh, Unfortunately, at this point, a team like Queso is just going to keep moving through this with another kill down in the bottom lane onto that Celeste. They're, they're just all over them at the moment. There's no chance for them to defend. But when you say, look around the, the, the map and look what lanes are, are dominating, it is, of course, Queso. So despite the fact that, you know, Luga, oop, who has just reconnected, excitement for uh, for equinoxes some hope is issued back to them uh palmatora has done a fantastic job of dominating his lane hegman and techno jj as well have been constantly hot on alex s's heels here uh really making vikings life a misery as well so really it's just hundle who's had the free reign running around with tyrus and i think at this point while there is such a, an obvious advantage now for Keso, I think it's important to talk about what Keso did quite well last week and what the teams that, that picked up wins last week did the best. And, and that's the early action into the Ghost Wing, then taking down multiple towers with the ability to just team fight regularly. Ooh, We're seeing more fighting Hegman. going on here. Diving onto Viking. Yeah, Viking is going to find himself caught between a rock and a hard place. Easy kill comes through for Queso. And Palmatoro once more diving in with that never formed detonator. Not quite able to find the explosion that he was looking for, though they will contest this gold oak, trying to steal even more gold away. <laughs> and it goes to Palmatoro as well. Sold in the wound. When it, when it rains, it pours, unfortunately, for Equinox at this point. Um, and you can just see by the level disadvantages that we're, we're seeing coming out here, like a level or two on most of the, the players here for Keizo, and that, it just makes it so much more difficult. We're seeing them even go on Lorelei in the mid lane for a little bit there as well. It, it's an uphill struggle, to say the least. This is more of a mountain than a molehill for the rest of this game here for Equinox. But for Keizo, this now basically has to become a game of closing out as clean as possible in my mind like you need to be able to just go from objective to objective kill to objective and continue to snowball an advantage like this yeah for sure that that first week match up team queso versus clash and that was viking starts burning away it's going to be the uh uh the ultimate from alex s to, to keep him alive there was quite a surprise i think many people felt that team queso was the european dream team of all times call them the tribe potentially of eu but clash uh formed of you know mostly mouse sports and uh a mixture of uh, the kind of remaining players in eu really just bringing the the pain train um and it's really exciting personally for me because the storyline uh that i was predicting was just uh, a team queso over with a storm hundle completely caught out this is going to be kieran finding a kill here and that's potentially the uh the messiness that Team Clash wanted to avoid giving up a kill when unnecessary, but they do get the Ghost Swing, so at least trading for that objective. Yeah, and here comes the fight from uh, Ghost Swing as well. They're at least moving forward for it, getting a tower on the other side of the map as well, so double objectives at the same time, only a kill given away. A little sloppy, as you said, I think. At this point in their minds, they're maybe not playing as, as clean as they would if this was an even game. Um, but you can see just how much damage they can put out in this mid lane. Techno JJ not quite landing everything, but it's still, this tower is just going to get shredded down. They've got the shield from Ghostwing uh, to keep them alive. And unfortunately, Alt 
from Celeste doesn't quite catch anybody to deter the rest of the push. And when the rest of Kato come up here, here comes the Grumpjaw with the ultimate available. This is such a deadly position to be in if this was an even game. Oh my god, look at the damage coming out. There it is, the ultimate, and that is a completely dead Viking. Stefan 2 going to try and piece on out. Kieran kiting back Tyras, who's just having a whale of a time on his signature Grumpjaw. I remember back in the early uh, 2017 season, uh, mainly the spring season, really, for the, the Vainglory 8 last year, Tyras' Grumpjaw was such a, uh, a fire starter for, uh, for SK. When, uh, whenever he had it, it was almost a, a guaranteed win for them. So having it back in meta, uh, clearly this, uh, this, this hybrid build working out so well for the on-hit effect, and, and Tyra's really just having a lot of fun. And it's the most banned uh, hero completely, like not just jungler when you look oh, at no. what everybody was playing. Uh-oh. He just That's about gets away there, Stefan too. <laughs> Popping the gets ultimate there to, down, to yeah. make sure he survives. This turret potentially will uh, find itself in trouble. Hegman engaging with Hundor. This is a 4v2 <laughs> for cool. Team Queso, which they will very swiftly disengage. But you can just see the fear in Equinox's eyes. Not even so sure they can go for that. Viking taking 600 damage from a single spit by Hundor diving on in. Great ultimate. Not quite catching though. Equinox just able to split in time. That's going to be tier 2 turret in the top lane removed for uh, Team Queso and now this push into the mid lane as Alex S Ooh. loses his life and Viking will just get blown up and the armory turrets on both top and mid under fire. Team Queso finally breaking into the base, taking down mid armory and potentially even looking to finish the game. We'll have to see how uh, aggressive they want to play. Yeah, 11 minutes in with this advantage from the man advantage very early on. Now they're going to take down that third armory turret. Don't even need the minions. They're just going to chunk it down themselves, take the damage on their health, and get the last armory for themselves, or at least the second armory on the bottom side. Here comes the fight. And a gauge. Yeah, from Equinox. They're looking for the fight here, really going for that last ditch defense. Palmatoro <laughs> doing the burst. Hundor diving forward. Can he find the kill? No, he cannot. Now Stefanto will blow him up. That's going to be Hundor losing his life. Second kill. Uh, for Equinox there, and Team Koso will take the two armories and back off. Yeah, take the two armories, you know the Ghost Wing just landed once again, back away, reset yourself and close this game out cleanly. There, there is really a world, it's such a tiny, tiny chance for Equinox, but if Kaiser would have thrown themselves into one last ditch like push without being properly prepared. That's basically the only way this game turns around. And even then, that's a massive, massive uh, ask from Kaiser. They're going to actually catch out this Lorelei at this rate. And Alex, probably not long for this world. Nah, he will lose his life very shortly. Does go for the stun and finds it. But Palmatoro just showcasing that aftershock burst damage. And realistically, stress, I think we all know it. There would be yep. multiple times that Team Kesa would have to throw themselves down mid to uh, for that to happen, uh, for Equinox to come back in, especially with Luger's connectivity issues not seeming to be revolved. Ghostwing will be taken here for Team Kesa. Shields for all, regeneration outside of combat. Now we just have to see how Team Queso want to approach potentially the final push. <laughs> Through mid, I suppose. Uh, they seem to be grouping up and just going for it. They even just go forward. Oh my. Yeah, Hundor straight on in with the fight. That's going to be the first kill of the fight going through. Hundor trying to slow down. Palmatoro diving in. Alex S dead. And Kieran on the Sanctuary will lose his life as well. That's three kills. And that's going to be the game. Team Queso closing it out in just 13 minutes. That's going to be their second victory of the VPL.